Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. Here we'll see how to create dynamic widget on click like this. If you click on this button, it would create random string. As you can see, all the strings are different. Well, we have a tag over here. You can create as many as you want and you can also delete any of them you want. And you can create more like this. And you can also clear them. So that's what we'll see how to do since this is creating widget on the fly and you have to maintain the state. We'll use Riverpod to do that. We'll use Riverpod 2.0 to do it. So let's get started. So now this is my home page and home page I have this uh, scaffold and then app bar and then the body. The body, the first child is a single child scroll view and inside this we have this column. Why we have this column? That's because we want the whole page to be scrollable. So this is the first reason why we have this uh, single child scroll view and column. And inside the column, the first child over here would be for dynamically generated widgets. So now over here, the second child, which should be actually a row because this row would contain these two buttons over here, one for creating, another is for clearing. So we're gonna start with this two buttons creation first. Here we'll have row and inside row we'll have children. And after that over here, we're gonna put our first child. Now this is our first child inside the row and this is an icon button as you can see from here. We have the icon sign and icon label and after that we have a bit of style for the button and then we have this unpressed event. Right now unpressed event is empty. Now we're gonna have this one, copy this and put it here and then we'll create another button. So this is our other button over here. Now this one with this icon clear and label clear and once again we have a bit of style and over here our unpressed event is still empty. Now the first thing we want to do, do a bit of styling for this. So over here we could do main axis alignment. Now with this they are actually uh, getting nice layout using this space around instead of space between. Now the first part first part of this puzzle has been done where we have this row and inside the row we have these two clickable buttons. All right, now next we want to create over here another widget. Now this widget should be a column widget. The reason is because inside this we'll have a lot of widget one after a, on the top of each other. Now inside the column this is our first child and first child is a container. We can save it and if, if we save it we see it says hello and with this we have some basic styling width and height color and the text itself now this is the text that we want to make it dynamic which we'll do very soon and right after this we want to have another button over here remember earlier we had a minus button or remove button so we'll have the button over here now since this button is reactive so over here we use gesture detector and inside this we'll have this remove icon now let's go ahead and save it. Now we see that it's on the top of each other, but this is not what we want. So we're gonna cut these two buttons over here and wrap them around another widget, which is called row widget. We wanna put them next to each other. So over here we'll have this row widget. And then we're gonna put it like this. Now after this, let's save it. Now we do see that they're on the next to each other. Now we need to do further styling for this. So over here we're gonna put main axis alignment dot center. So it would put everything in center. Now with this our basic layout is ready. Now of course we need to be reactive. We're going to create on this button over here and generate widget dynamically and loop through it. Now for this reason we'll come over here. Now inside this we're going to go ahead and create a new file and we'll call it string generator string generator dot, dot dart and this class would be responsible for generating string for us random string so over here we'll call it string generator and then it would extend our notifier class notifier class and then it would return us a list of strings so that's why over here we need to mention a list of string as the type now after that we'll have like this now we are going to import the class notifier it should be capital letter n and then let's import the package which is riverpod package make sure you install the riverpod and after that over here we need to override one class actually we need to override one method not a class that's the build method now if you use class for your riverpod which is coming with the riverpod 2.0 
in that case you have to override this build method now the build method should return something what it should return it should return us list of string empty string for now now this is based on this type over here so over here if you're returning a list so in your build method initially you also have to return a list of course it could be list of string it could be list of integer it could be list of any custom object it could be anything it depends on this one over here all right and after that we're going to have to create a method that method would be responsible for actually generating um, that method would be responsible for adding string to our list the list we are returning or the list we have so the method name is called add string so this string method this add string method as we click on this button so this would get called but of course by this time a random string would be generated so it would generate the string on our UI and then we'll pass to it and after that we'll, st we'll store this generated string in our list now where is this list coming from since we are using riverpod actually the state object would hold our list so we are using spread operator over here whatever the items are there and we are adding a new one so that's how you use spread operator to add an item to an existing list remember since we are using state management package over here the state object is going to hold our list the list we are talking about now once we call this method the generated string would be added in the state object and after this we need to expose this notifier to our UI when we say expose this notifier that means they're actually exposing the state but how do you expose the state for this over here we need to create a new variable so here as you can see that we have notifier provider and notifier provider takes the class the class that is extended by the notifier and the type of object that returns so over here notifier provider would help us to expose this notifier which is string generator to our UI and the variable that we created over here is called string notifier provider so based on this using this we would be able to access the generated string or the state whatever the state is there using this one we would be able to access that from our UI now this is our UI now over here first we want to click on this button and generate the string which means that we want to be able to call this method now we want to do it for this button now this button lives inside this row and this is the button over here on this unpressed event we are going to add the string even before that in the build method over here right after this we need to access our notifier our notifier provider which is a string notifier provider let's import the library and since we are going to generate random string we also need this random class over here now this is coming from over here and this is the provider that actually we created now because of this one whatever we do inside this class we would be able to access them including this state variable now let's come over here now inside this on pressed event which is this one this elevated button which is creating our actually would be creating our widget so inside this now inside this let's access our notifier like this so over here we are accessing our string notifier provider one second which is this one over here and then we have this notifier object and after that actually we call this add string method and this is what i told you early that because of this object we'll be able to access everything inside this and we access this add string method now if we click on this button over here right now it would generate string for us let's go ahead and click all right uh, it's hot reloading and even if we click it looks like nothing happens now the reason is that over here we are not really here we are not really exposing or using the generated string now we can prove that our string is being generated over here we can just simply do a uh, length so over here we do state dot length now whatever the length is there currently would be able to print that now let's go ahead and click on this so three four five six as you can see over here it's changing 
So it means that we are able to add them. Now since we are able to add them, this is the time that we show whatever is being hold inside this state variable, whatever inside this state variable, which is a list, we want to show them. Now how to show them? This is the time we access this column widget over here inside this row. Now I'm going to cut this row and wrap this around over here, the one that we created at the top. So this is the random list. This is the list actually which contains our generated list. So we can get that one. And how do we get that? So over here we need to use spread operator and then we do random list. And from that we get the map object or the map function. And after that, whatever we have, we can just simply return. What do we have? We have our row widget. This one, we simply return that. Now it will loop through it because of this spread operator, it would get the complete list and using the map function, we can loop through them one by one. And each of the item in the list, we can access using this E. So E actually would hold our generated string. So over here, we can just simply go ahead and do E to string. As you can see, we have generated many string. Now let's go ahead and click on them and uh, it would generate more strings for us. So which means that it's already working. Now this time we are going to have to remove items or string from the list as we click on them. But right now it's not reactive. So the first thing we want to do, we want to create a method right after this. So this is the method which is called remove an item. All we do, we pass an index and we get the list. Remember state object holds our list. So it's like this is the list. Now we pass the index and then Every list has a method which is called remove add. So we call that a method. Based on that, it finds the index. Based on the index, it finds the item and remove the item from the list. And after that, whatever the list is there, we update the list over here, assigning like this using spread operator. Now we need to call this one from our UI. And where to call it from? We're going to call it from here. Now, first inside this on tap event, we are getting the list. The list is at the top. As you can see, we get the list at the top. So we get the list. And for the certain element E, remember, we are still looping through this list. So each of the element are represented by E. So we give that E to this method, which is called index of, and it gives us the index for that string. Now, if we have the index, so once again, we can access our notifier object and then related method or properties, which is remove an item, then we pass to it as an index. Now let's save it. After hot reload, if you click on this, you'd see that it's gone. You can remove them from anywhere and you can still add more, just like this. Right, so this section has worked pretty well. Now the last section. Or is the last section we want to be able to click on this and remove everything now for this reason over here we need to create another method now this method we call remove string now what it does actually it just clears this list so whatever is there we just assign empty list to our state variable which actually holds the list so after this state would be empty nothing is there so if nothing is there we don't need to show anything now once again, we need to find a way to call this. For this reason, we can just simply grab this one, this notifier object, and then after that we can call remove string. And let's save it. Then hot reload, you click on them and you will see that everything is gone. But of course, you can still generate and remove one by one if you want and clear all of them. Thank you. So that's how you generate dynamic widget on the fly using RiverPod. Thank you.